we're in uh, in the book of Joshua. We found out, you know, Joshua and them's getting some victory. And all of a sudden there was five kings, man. Five kings came against them. And the Bible says, you know, they hid in a cave. A lot of times the things that want to rule in our life are not always all in the front, man. They're hiding underneath, you know. And it's uh, a lot of things here, a lot of things here. So what Joshua does is he puts a big stone over the hole. He says, we'll deal with you later. And they went and fought battles, man. They came right back, and then they opened it up. They opened up the cave. They brought these kings out. What we've discovered is our church has been kind of crippled for a bit. We've been crippled because I think there are five rulers in this church. Five things represented by these five kings. They represent five things that we seem to let dominate our thinking, dominate our hearts, and they've been ruling us. This morning we looked at the first one. We've seen that this first king down here in Joshua chapter 10. In verse 23, the five kings of the, out of the king of Jerusalem came out. This king of Jerusalem. You know, and the beautiful part is we're going to have to get vulnerable to see these, right? you got to open up and see them. They brought out this king of Jerusalem. Jerusalem would, meaning the teaching of peace, you know, peace. And so something's dominated our thinking, and it's been wrong. That we think, like, man, life's good, isn't it? Man, no trouble at all. There's this pastor's conference one time I was at, and this preacher got up there and says, man, our church is growing. We built a building. Life is good. We have no troubles. The guy that got up behind him to speak was an older pastor. He just said, well, if life's going good for you, everybody in your community likes you and church is growing, then I want you to go knock on doors in your town and tell people without Christ they're going to go to hell. I want you to go preach seeds of the gospel everywhere. Make a ruckus where you go and bring up God's word. Bring up Christ's name. Go to your school board meetings and stand up for Jesus. He said, and then you'll find out that it's a, I was like, that is a good word. Because we're going to face friction. When you do the right thing, you always face friction, right? History. God is moving, but the enemy's always countering. So a lot of times when you're not feeling that friction, we're coasting downhill. We killed that king this morning. Quit thinking, our church has got problems. And gang, here's the word. We're always going to have problems. Of some sort, we just take him to the word. We take him to God. We preach him out, don't we? That's what we do. We just go to God's word and his spirit. So just don't think because sometimes things are a little bit rough that God's not in it. Why do people think that? Things are peaceful and smooth and you know, or things go rough and people are like, you know, then it's the devil's fault, you know. But a lot of it's just life. We're in a spiritual battle. So our, our goal is to plant seeds. We're sowing seeds this year. That's what we're going to do. We're really focused on that. So this first king that died this morning is what? This king of peace. Quit thinking that way. Quit thinking that way. Every good relationship is going to have issues and fights and struggles. Our relationship with the Lord's that way. Our church is that way. Here's the second king. Verse 23 says, the first one came out the king of Jerusalem. The second one was called the king of Hebron. You know what this word Hebron means? Hebron means association. That's what the word means. It means like a company or a band. If you study Hebron back in this day, you'll find it, it was a highland. And it just wasn't a highland. It would be considered like a modern town. It was a place that would be desired to be live at. Association. Do you realize ungodly influence seems to be greater today than godly influence? Our culture, it's, we've created a culture. We live in a culture where it's like, oh, my gosh, man. It, it like, dominates. But, church, there's a problem with evil, the culture. Or you want to study the passage on, yeah, we got the devil, the flesh, and we got the world. We know that's evil, and we know that's against God. The problem is we're associating with it. We're friends with it. It used to be said that you're just too worldly. We're supposed to be godly. James 4, 4 says that friendship with this world is enmity with God. We like it. We like the influence that it has on us. We're supposed to be the church of the living God, and we are supposed to be the greatest influencers on the culture. When COVID kicked in, what happened? People started fading away from church. Of course, you know, some of them are watching online and doing all that type of But they say church attendance in most places has never really come back. I, I think we experienced some of that. We got some hard hits, and we just seen it. People got another view. And you know what happened? The culture kind of dictated to people how they were going to live their lives. We're not going to be those people. That king's going to die tonight. We got to quit this association with the world. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 25, guys, 
we have got to assemble together. We can't forsake that. I read a leadership article here not too long ago, and it says, if you can get your leadership in your church to show up 60% of the time on a Sunday morning, you're doing great. I'm not sure the Bible's down with that. When we've been called to a higher standard of faithfulness. Matthew 6 tells us, we sang it since we were little kids, that we're going to seek God's kingdom first. If we seek God's kingdom first, folks, we want to lead people to Christ. Seeds get planted in dirty places. I'm not saying to avoid the world. I'm just saying if the world's an iceberg, then you better be so hot that you begin to melt it. And some of us, the problem is we sit on that iceberg, we get a chill in our hind end, and an hour later, you're stuck. You've become part of it. I've experienced it myself. I think we all can probably give testimony of that, that we've went too far sometimes. So, guys, the second king that's going to die tonight and in our church, the first mentality is peace. Like, it always has to be peaceful. Everything always has to be easy. It's not easy. War's not easy. Relationships are not easy. It's tough. Life's tough. The second king that needs to die is this king of association. Sometimes our best of friends and who we hang with, they're affecting us more than we are affecting them. Part of the reason why is we're not sowing seeds when we're places. I like when people, I love when people go places that are filled with a lot of ungodly people. If their goal in mind is that, God, please, I want to sow seeds, open doors, I'll bust through them boldly if you do that. The problem is we've lost that a little bit, and I think the message this morning said it best, didn't it? Like we sit back and we just want to hold our peace. We cannot do that. So the second king tonight, we're, you know, we're going to bring back, we're bringing back purity. Let's bring back godliness. We're Christians. We got standards. Let's stop being silent. Let's quit ourselves from being so associated with the world that people cannot tell the difference. There's got to be a distinct difference in our lives by the way we live, by the way we speak. So folks, let's assemble. Let's don't settle for part-time. And I don't know if you realize this, but part-time people, you know what sucks about being part-time? You never get benefits. You're not experiencing the benefits of the Christian's life because you're not full-time. Let's get, we're going full-time today. Our associations are going to change. Some of us have become too much like a culture that needs Christ. We've just blended in. So we're going to end that tonight. How about melting some icebergs? That's what I think we need to be about. That's what this vision conference is going to be about. So that's king number two. I put my foot on his neck just like Joshua did here. I think we've seen him. And then he's going to hang here all the evening long. Let's talk about it. Just say, you know what? That needs to change in my life too. That's change. Uh, I've compromised there. I've got to stop that. I've become just like him. I don't want to stand out. I don't want to be different. Who remembers doing that book study, Weird, we did? We read this book together. There's a church called Weird. And, and you know what the subtitle of the book was? Hey, Christian, you might as well be weird because normal is not working. I liked it. And I think we need a little bit more of that. Jesus, uh, thank you tonight, man, just for the time we've had together and just eating and hanging and being and, Lord, just singing to you, the great God, the great King. Lord, you're the master, man. You're the hero of our life and of our worlds, Lord. We love you tonight. God, I pray that we have a good time just even des eating desserts together. And I, I pray that we glean even, Lord, with the words that Brian, his stories, what he's got to say. So, Lord, we give the rest of this evening to you. It's in your name we pray.